Hey Taz, hello everybody. It's time for uh, have some Psalm 12 now. We have before uh, went through 11 Psalms. And if you have a Bible, take it, uh, take it. Or if you have some application, you can look Bible. So you can take Psalm 12 and follow some things. Uh, I have a purpose to uh, preach here now. Okay. Psalm 12. Verse 1. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceased, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord, the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, With our tongue will we prevail, our lips are our own, who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now, I, now will I rise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that buffeth at him. All right, this uh, psalm tells uh, much about the uh, situation in, in the time of tribulation, if we tell about it. But of course we can see all the time uh, these figures, what, what can be uh, understood in our time and so on. And... Uh, and you can see verse 1, for the godly man ceased. Or we can see in our time that godly men are ceased a lot. And uh, during many, many times and dispensation, godly men have ceased, ceased. But uh, especially now, and it seems that uh, everything else has come instead. For the faithful fail from among, among the children. They speak vanity, everyone, with his neighbor. How many people speak vanity about his neighbor? I think it's epidemic. With flattering lips and with a, with a double heart do they speak. Double heart and flattering lips. Oh, it's so nice to speak something else in front of some people and something else behind that people. Oh, it's so common. It's epidemic. And it's a sin. Who have said, with our tongue, Will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Oh, who is Lord over us? People have uh, lost the sense to understand where, who is the Lord and where is He. And uh, that's pretty common also. And it will, it really will be. This happens, will, will really will, really will happen. For the oppression of the poor, for the sign of the needy, uh, now will I rise, say the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that buffeted at him. Okay, but there, there's always been oppression of the poor. And how many poor are now oppressed? It has always been. People are so bad that they have to oppress someone to get something from someone and keep someone poor that they can be rich. Uh, it's so selfish and greedy, bad world in which we live uh, until Lord Jesus Christ come back and may he come soon. For the sighing of the needy now uh, uh, of the needy now will I rise, said the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that buffet at him. Okay. In the time of tribulation uh, there will be especially poor people because in time of tribulation, you can buy or sell without mark of the beast in your forehead or in your hand. And, uh, and it's a difficult time. You, you should bow down to this Antichrist and follow his, uh, follow his uh, steps and be a good servant for him. But if, uh, if you are not, you will get very poor. You will get very poor and very oppressed. So uh, this psalm is not uh, first uh, first uh, speaking about uh, uh, oppressing during in this world time and and what comes to history. Of course, there is a figure figures about it uh, in everything, like this flattering lips and and uh, tongue that speak at proud things and so on. It's been it's always been and it, it will be as long as Lord Jesus Christ comes back and. He will settle everything well. But uh, you can understand these uh, passages uh, 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 for the future 
in the time of tribulation. And in verse 3, the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. And it's like uh, who have said with our tongue, will we prevail, our lips are our own, who is Lord over us? And we can find in these uh, verses, great me, me, myself and I. Oh. Okay. Godly man have ceased during last decades, many last decades, what comes to Bible scholars and committees and translating Bible, godly, godly men have, have ceased when, uh, when what comes to keep the pure words of God, King James Bible and sound doctrine and those matters which God has once delivered unto the saints and, and godly men have ceased uh, during the during, uh, last one 200 years, of course, before that, but especially now when we have a lot of different kind of Bible translations, and we should have one uh, in which to trust. And this uh, Psalm 12, it uh, speaks especially about it, especially about it, in which Bible uh, we can rely on and in, in which Bible we can trust. There's so many kind of translations, okay. There is uh, many common things and everything is not wrong, but there is uh, too badly wrong, too many things. So, so it's uh, difficult sometimes to call them Bible, at least when there is a uh, uh, human hand of flesh has done its work there, not the Spirit of God. Alright. But about godly men and godliness. And uh, uh, godliness, go godliness like godliness, is being like God. It's thinking his thoughts. First Corinthians, chapter two, sixteen. Liking what he likes, Psalm thirty-seven, four. Disliking what he dislikes, Psalm uh, one hundred thirty-nine. 21, and taking his words and his speech to be absolute truth. Godliness is fearing God, loving God, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3, and sacrificing for his sake, Romans 12, chapter 1, verse 2. And uh, Matthew 19, 21, 29, a godly man doesn't destroy people's faith in the book by which they, they were saved. A godly man doesn't use a book, he doesn't believe in, in to fool people who believe it. A godly man doesn't make a living of a Christian by pretending he is reading from the scriptures, when he doesn't believe any exist on this earth. And man who does these things is as ungodly as hell. The, the heart, verse 2, uh, is the source of the flattery and the vanity and the proud things. Verse 3, note, speak twice in verse, verses 2 and 3, and then lips and tongue repeated twice in verses 4 and 5. There is more said in the Bible about sins of the tongue, lips and speech than any other sin. It's, it's the son of perdition, the Antichrist, who opened his mouth to speak great things. Revelation uh, chapter 13 verse 5 and blaspheme God. Now will I rise. There it goes again. The tribulation saint will be raptured out. Isaiah, uh, in book of Isaiah uh, 26, 19 till the indignation be overpassed. Isaiah 26, 20. Psalm 50 uh, verses 3 to 4 describes the operation. This is a post-tribulation rapture, often confounded with 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 1 Thessal Thessalonians chapter 4. And uh, from him that puffeth at him is a direct reference to the Antichrist in the previous Psalm, verse 5. Uh, 
and uh, there are many uh, many Bibles in the world and what comes to many English Bibles there is uh, uh, there are many Bibles which uh, doesn't uh, share the same amount and same kind of references to the son of perdition than Old King James Bible does. So it's uh, if you want to fi find uh, all those references and uh, what comes to sound doctrine about uh, Antichrist and which means the son of perdition, uh, it's better to take this Old King James Bible and you can find uh, much better everything than the Bibles which, which are even vanished the uh, references and the uh, understanding about this item. Okay, let's go on. And uh, then verse uh, 12, verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words, a silver trine in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. Seven, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. No, this cannot be. This is heresy. Get rid of it. So, uh, and that's the way they do. The ASV kicks it out, the NASV kicks it out, the RV kicks it out, the RSV kicks it out, the N uh, NRSV kicks it out, the NIV kicks it out, and the uh, New King James Version kicks it out, uh, and Kenneth Taylor kicks it out, and all the Catholic Bibles, NEB, NJB, etc. Get rid of it. Uh, so it means that God is not able to preserve his words. So is it so. So is it so. And this is not a problem only in English Bibles, it's a worldwide, it's a worldwide translation problem, or how could I say untranslation problem. The only book left on earth today that says he is able to do this is a King James 1611 or any other year, edition of the Holy Bible. Uh, King James only is, is the mark of the Bible believer in this century. No other Bible says you can read God's words, not even when they mention them. For all of those Bibles, God have mercy on you, but <laughs> do you with, do with one uh, promise in the book that says God can preserve them? Amen. All of the new versions, with one exception, have all already the word them in verse 7. So the word us, so the antecedent, will not refer, refer to the words of God. The word of them occurs twice in the, in the verse. It appears, it appears as a suffix on the third word in all Hebrew manuscripts. It's not us in one single Hebrew manuscript from any set of any manuscripts used for any edition of uh, of any Masoretic text. And there is a lot of Bibles which uh, they don't want to use this them but they put us or or something like uh, uh, them meaning like people. Okay. Uh, and there is um, the Hebrew Publication Society uh, does have an English translation with them after the third word uh, keep them. The third word is uh, it, it means to keep or to guard. It means to reserve and preserve, to observe something and attend, attend to it, attend to it. Uh, the fourth word is which means to watch or to keep. The word also implies defending something and preserving something. The suffix on uh, samar is not us, 
uh, it's third person plural them exactly as you find it in a King James 1611. And exactly as you don't find it in the translation of those good godly men who believed in the verbal plenary inspired uh, originals. So those so-called originals which are not anywhere. Uh, now do you realize the magnitude of what you have just read? As the full force of it struck you yet, this is no matter of he should have been she, or he should have been it, or Easter should have been Passover. No, this is the only verse in either testament that says God will preserve the words you got, you got your fundamentals from. Behold, 98% of the fundamentalists will not tolerate the God who can preserve his words. So it's a pretty much so it's a pretty much people who can tolerate God, who can preserve his words. God can easily do many kind of things or he should do what people want. Oh, he can be a nice person, help me in, in time of need and I have so prayer request and I want to trust the Lord and believe God. But you, how is it impossible you to believe that God can preserve his words? It's so difficult matter for so many Christians, so many Christians, and of course non-Christians who don't believe the whole book. Okay, of course there might be some people who don't believe uh, Jesus and God, but they can think, uh, oh, if there is a God, why he shouldn't keep his words? So even in in a common sense, you can understand that if if and yes, there is an Almighty God. Uh, Almighty God, and uh, He's a creator, a finisher, uh, begin uh, everything He has done. He's a finisher of everything. He's the beginning uh, and the end. So, why just preserving His words would be a difficult thing or problem? No problem, no difficult. Difficult is in you, and the problem is in you, not in God. Well, they want their words to replace His. Every upper state from Origen, Clement, from Augustine, Aquila, Summa, Summacus, Theodotian, Jerome, uh, and many popes uh, pretend that, he, that his profession of faith in lost paper and his knowledge of the language written on that pile of lost paper was grounds for altering the authorized, words, authorized text. But once he had attained status, status or standing as being godly, he violated every known Hebrew text in existence to get rid of God's words. Just like that. And uh, uh, a literal translation would have said, Thou shalt keep them the words of the Lord, O Lord, thou wilt preserve it uh, from this generation forever. The word us is not in any text. It's the result of a private interpretation of the passage that runs the them back to the poor, the needy of verse 5. What happened to those words that were tried in furnace, furnace of earth purified seven times? And they vanished from uh, many different Bible translations I mentioned already before. Like the morning dew at sunrise. Do you have them? Do you have the words of the Lord? Do you have the words of the Lord? Imagine words that were tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. And then you couldn't get your hands on them because God didn't intend you for you to. Uh, can you imagine that? You can't get anything unless God gives to you. And if you don't uh, believe and trust, for example, his words, why he, should give, why he should give you anything about them? If you want to believe some kind of false or delusion or something, he can give you strong delusion and you can, 
you can be a full of some kind of faith and full of some kind of words and full of some kind of knowledge. Oh, I know, I know so much. Oh, God has given me so much. Yes, yeah, sure, he, he can give you even more delusion and, and uh, apostate and, and uh, different kind of understandings about words. He can lead you to the uh, pastors of uh, Nestle, Alan Kurthort, uh, uh, Alan Metzger, Septuaginta, uh, Kumran, wherever, and you think you're, you're one of the wisest person in the world. Oh, and maybe you can even speak Greek and Hebrew. Oh, that's a nice thing, but, but still you don't believe that God can preserve his words, which he has done. He has done it. It's, it goes that way, and you can go that way if you go another way, then it's your problem, and then you are in somewhere other way. Okay. Uh, pure words can purify. They cannot make you impure. impure. Pure people are attached to purity. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant love it. Psalm chapter 119, verse 140. What is the point in verbal plenary inspiration if you are going to lose the words on purpose? Would God start something he couldn't finish? What did Jesus Christ think he was doing by telling his disciples to keep his uh, words? Uh, John 14, 23. When the scriptures he himself quoted were not the original autographs uh, containing those words. Proverbs uh, 22, 17 and 21, and Psalm 119, 89, 140, are the Holy Spirit's mind in these matters. The words of the Lord are pure, powerful, penetrating, preserved, personified, Christ and, and permanent. Christ in bracket. The reference to the Hebrew singular after Nazar is a warning that the words will be preserved in the word. Hmm. Great. Action. Uh, discard 100% of the godly scholars with all of their opinions, references, values, investigations, translations, conjectures, and historic position. The more godly they are, the, godly, the more ungodly will be their treatment of the text. The Holy Spirit refines his words and would use words like dung and piss, see authorized version, 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 27, before he would use sheer fun or nice. He knows how satanic Christians talk as well as the satanic satanists. There are at least 20 Greek words in the New Testament that the Holy Spirit used in a sense completely unique from the sense the words were used in the Greek language for 400 years preceding the time of Christ. Purified seven times. Marvelous coinkiting. The work has, was done on earth not forever. O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And when it was done, it went out in seven installments. Seven installments. Let's go look at them. First, the original Hebrew of 99% of the Old Testament. Second, the original Aramaic uh, of 1% of the Old Testament. Third, the original Greek of the New Testament with Latin and Persian and Aramaic words in the vocabulary. Uh, fourth, in the first and earliest translation, the Old, old Syriac. Fifth, in the second oldest translation, the Old Latin. Not, not uh, uh, Latin Vulgate by Hieronymus Jerome, it's a later one. I'm talking about Old Latin, about 100 years after Christ. Sixth, in the German Reformation for the continent of Europe, Martin Luther. And seventh, for the entire world, from the seafaring nation of Great Britain, the other side version of 1611. Oh, there is a historical seven times purification. And there is no antecedent for this generation, and that is why the scholars run it back to the poor and needy before the matter 
of the words of the Lord showed up. If the text was left as it stood within the context of where God you put it, where God put it, you would read that the generation that saw the publication of the English Protestant Reforma Reformation Bible, AV 1611, would keep God's word. See Revelation 3 and 8 for confirmation. And from that generation on, the words would be available to anyone. So we have all these words of God which are given to the saints. We have them. Sorry if you don't. That's your problem. Our book was translated into every major language in the world before Westcott and Hort restored the Jesuit text of Rome, Rome uh, to different kind of universities and schools. All right. Yes. Do you exalt and honor wildness, wildness and you don't exalt uh, these words? Well, then uh, last uh, verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 8. The wicked walk on every side when the wildest men are exalted. Well, we can see that one also happening nowadays. Wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Well, honestly speaking, we are living in a time when there are vilest men who are in the name of Allah. They are killing people and they, they are promoted and they are uh, uh, tolerated and everything. And they can do pretty much with uh, political correctness protecting them. They can do many kind of killing things in Europe and Africa, Middle East and, and America and everywhere. Well, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. We have a lot of men and women, for example in Finland, who are very wild and they are exalted. And they are in leading position in many places. Many voters are like that. The wicked walk on every side. Oh no when the vilest men are exalted. Okay, okay, direct reference, sure, also is in the time of tribulation. I'm not only speaking this time, but you can see this time also. This is a very exact psalm for this time also. And vilest men are exalted. The more vile, the more worse, the more bad you are, man or woman, and you can be exalted. You can speak a different kind of lies. You can lie for everything. You can uh, promote killing and lying and so on, and you will be exalted. Oh, you will be king or queen, almost. Yes. And what comes to Bible matters? Those people, scholars and so on, who want to promote something else than these words, these very words, pure words in King James Bible, uh, many times those wicked on the eyes of God, what he, they have done, his words, walk every side, teach everywhere, and preach, or proclaim nowadays, not preaching, and uh, they sing their songs and uh, speak their speeches, and they, they are exalted. Oh, what a great time for this at the end of end times of this uh, time of uh, uh, dispensation of the grace of God. Wildest men are exalted. Okay, but God will God will honor and rise His words above every name, even above the, even above the wildest man. That's great. Amen.